So in order to get the maximum benefits of exercise, so one should aim to get at least a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise or a combination of both. But let us say if this person is a complete beginner and they're not and they are completely new to exercising, then I usually start them with a low intensity exercise and I progress them to a moderate int intensity exercise in a period of three months or so. So what is this low intensity, moderate intensity, vigorous intensity, right? So this is where I'm talking about the exercise intensity. So kind, kind of like how much uh, I need to challenge the heart. So in order to measure the exercise intensity, the test that I'm going to talk about first is called as a talk test. This is something that I really like because you don't need to have any special gadgets to measure the exercise intensity. So based on the talk test, so let us talk about what is low intensity exercise. Ask yourself if you can talk easily while doing your favorite kind of exercise. You're operating at a low intensity if you can easily talk in entire sentences with little to no break for a breath. So let me show you an example of me performing this talk test while I'm actually singing one of my favorite native Tamil song, New York Nagaram. As you can see here, I'm able to have a smooth conversation here. I'm able to sing a song very comfortably. So let me try one. New York Nagaram Urangum Neeram Thani You see how easy it is to have a conversation at the same time sing a song? So this is what I call as a light intensity workout. So if you have been sedentary for a long time, I probably recommend starting with this. So when we say moderate intensity, you should be able to talk but not sing while doing an exercise. This means that your voice will be strained and your breathing will be more noticeable but you'll still be able to hold a conversation. So let me show you an example. So for me right now, this one is a more intensive exercise. I'm able to have a comfortable conversation here. I probably wouldn't be enjoying having a conversation all during the course of my exercise, but still I'm comfortable. If you ask me to sing a song right now, let me try it. New York Nagar Urangum Neelam Thanime Adangir You see, I'm not comfortable singing a song here, but I'm comfortable having a conversation. So when we say vigorous intensity, it'll be hard for you to carry out a conversation. You'll be unable to talk more than a few words without pausing to catch your breath. I would not recommend beginners or person with recent heart disease to start exercising at this intensity. Let me show an example of this. So now I'm trying to have a conversation here. <sighs> I'm not pretty comfortable having a conversation right now. And this is what I call it as a vigorous intensity exercise. You see how easy it is to use this test. You don't need any special gadgets. You can start using this method right away and make sure that you improve your fitness. But let us say, let's say you're, if you're someone who want to take the fitness to the next level, right? And you want to make sure that I exercise the right target zone for my heart, then you have to measure the heart rate during exercise. So this method of tracking can be especially beneficial for individuals on medication that influence their heart rate, such as beta blockers, and those who have recently been affected by heart disease and wish to ensure that they don't overexert themselves during early stages of recovery. You would need a paper and pen, a calculator, and your resting heart rate number. Obviously, you would need a heart rate monitor to use this method while exercising. You can either use the cardio equipment heart rate monitor or a heart rate monitor watch or a chest strap heart rate monitor. The heart rate method that I'm going to teach you is called as the Carvalin heart rate method. I'm going to use me as an example and I'll show you my target heart rate range for low, moderate and vigorous intensity exercise. So my resting heart rate is 55 beats per minute. My age is 33 years old. So let's find out my heart rate max. The formula for heart rate max is going to be 207 minus 0.7 multiply h. So once I plug in the numbers, it comes to 183 beats per minute. So that's my heart rate max. So the heart rate reserve formula is going to be percentage intensity multiplied by heart rate max minus heart rate rest. And once you find that number, you add your resting heart rate. Let's find the intensity range for low, moderate and vigorous. The low intensity is going to be 30 to 40%. Moderate intensity is going to be 40 to 60%. Vigorous intensity is going to be 6 to 80%. So let's plug in the intensity numbers into the heart rate reserve formula to get the heart rate range for low, moderate and vigorous intensity. So the target heart rate for low intensity, which is between 30 to 40% intensity, is going to be between 93 beats per minute to 106 beats per minute. The target heart rate for moderate intensity, which is between 40 to 60% intensity, is going to be between 
106 beats per minute to 131 beats per minute. The target heart rate for vigorous intensity, which is between 60 to 80 percent intensity, is going to be between 131 beats per minute to 157 beats per minute. So what we know so far is that one minute of vigorous intensity exercise positively benefits the body in a similar manner to two minutes of moderate intensity exercise. However, vigorous intensity exercise carries more risk for injuries and they can trigger a heart attack from an underlying silent heart disease, although very rare. Therefore, it is advised to gradually climb the ladder of physical activity rather than immediately engaging in vigorous exercises due to potential health risks. So the American College of Sports Medicine recommends to start with moderate intense exercise, but I usually start with low intense exercise and gradually progress to moderate intense exercise. So some of my patients might get worried saying that if I start with low intense exercise, maybe I'm not improving my fitness, I'm just like wasting my time. But what does the evidence show? So studies have shown that if your baseline fitness is low, so in order to uh, understand this, so if you're not able to run one mile in 12 minutes, then your average fitness is low, which means that even a low intensity exercise will improve your fitness. That's promising, right? Because think about this. When we say exercise, immediately people think about, oh, I have to do this hard work every day, but you don't have to. You can just start slowly and build your fitness level. And once you start getting more comfortable with it, then you can start with more intensive exercise. So remember, fitness matters. So what I mean by that is that, so let us say I'm walking today, right? So today walking can be a moderate intensive exercise. But in three months later, the walking can become easier. So it becomes more like a low intensive exercise. But then your fitness can get stagnated if you don't challenge yourself. So that's why it's important to keep progressing with your intensity. And that's why I've, I've kind of like taught you these two tests, the talk test and the heart rate test, and you can use those tests to make sure that you're challenging enough so that your heart gets the exercise, it keeps improving the fitness, and you get the benefits from improved fitness. So I'm going to show an example how you can accumulate a moderate and a vigorous intensity exercise throughout the week. So let us say you have a busy week. So you probably have only time to do like a 10 minutes of a brisk walking daily. So let us say you do 10 minutes of brisk walking daily for five days, that's a total of 50 minutes of exercise, and you have 100 minutes pending still. So during the weekend, you can probably get 100 minutes of exercise. Maybe you can go hiking, or you can go for brisk walking or whatever. So another example is that, let's say you have only 10 minutes um, time during the week every day, then you can probably do like a 10 minutes of brisk walking five days a week. And during the weekend, let us say you go play a basketball game for an hour, Let's say that it's a competitive basketball game. So that qualifies as a vigorous intensity. So you go, if you get like 50 minutes of vigorous intensity, that is equivalent to 100 minutes of moderate intensity. So you've got like 150 minutes of uh, moderate intensity exercise per week. As you can see here, the goal is to accumulate the exercise per week rather than to focus just on a particular day. So a question that I often get asked is that, you know what, I've got like only like five, 10 minutes of free time, maybe in the afternoon, by exercising only for five minutes, does it still improve your fitness? And the answer is yes, every minute counts, okay? So the next question is that, should you consult your doctor before starting to exercise? So here are some recommendations from the American College of Sports Medicine. If you're more than 35 years old, and if you're healthy, and if you're not been exercising regularly, then start with light intensity and gradually build to moderate and then to vigorous in a period of three to six months. If you have underlying diabetes or heart disease or kidney disease, and if you have not been exercising regularly, discuss with your doctor before starting an exercise program. If, if you have diabetes, heart disease, or kidney disease, and if you have been exercising regularly, then it's okay to continue with moderate intensity, but before you start doing vigorous intensity, discuss with your doctor. So did you find this video helpful? If you did, can you please make sure that you hit the like button and please make sure that you put it as some appreciated comments in the comment box below. And if you feel like this video can be helpful for many people, please make sure that you share this with your friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Until then, goodbye.